and the tolerances weren't that good on these early Falcons. So, so we're going to show you some tips and guidelines on how to set up an RRS 3 link in an early Falcon uh, XA through to uh, XD. Uh, lots of similar componentry. Also uh, XR through to XY. And some of these things are really good tips so that you can get things in the right position the first time. Now obviously a lot of these cars, as you can see with this, has had a hard life. Uh, they weren't that accurate to begin with and when they've had accident damage underneath, rust repairs, sometimes things aren't a straight bolting. Uh, you have to tweak things around. So. Okay, what I'd like to show you today is the installation of an RRS3 link into this XB. This application applies to a lot of different models and you'll see the similarities in uh, different models as we go through them. But the first thing is the actual pressing in the floor where the seat mounts. This straddles that pressing and it essentially becomes a box section by panelling over it. So you have to have it equidistant either side of that seat pressing. You can measure from certain line-up points on the chassis or the top side. Drill yourself maybe a pilot hole, but the way I do it is I sit the cross member up on a couple of clamps, measure it backwards and forwards, and then I drill a self-tapper into each corner. That's my first start-up point. Then I look up in the top section of the floor and see where those holes are that they're actually straddling equidistant either side of the floor pressing. After you've done that, you can go straight ahead and drill all the bolt holes. It's also got to be spaced evenly left and right to the centre of the car, from the outer sill panels to the centre. And you've got a little bit of leeway that you can move it around just in case these aren't quite where they're supposed to be. So now we'll finish drilling in these last two holes, bolt it up, and then I'll show you the next step. This is what I always start with first. Now, quite often with these older cars, they've had a rugged life. This particular one, the old nine inch diff has been slamming up against the floor trying to do burnouts. Consequently, it's bent all where the original factory pinion snubber goes. So when we bolted up our frame, the two holes didn't line up. So I've drilled and tapped two fresh holes. Everything's fine now. But this is quite often a situation that occurs with some of these older cars and you think, why isn't it lining up and it's bent? Nothing that's going to cause any real issues with longevity or uh, maintenance. There's no structural integrity lost from that, but it'll never happen again once we put the three link in. The next thing is the Mumford frame. Now this is probably the trickiest part of the job. Now what, one of the reasons that the installation can go wrong with this you actually have to slide it back further to get it between the rails because the rails are tapered. Then you have to pry it forward. So, and this is absolutely critical to get the clearance between the axle housing and the Mumford uh, linkage frame. So all of this has to be measured. I always suggest that you clamp this in place with a couple of body clamps these. That way you can pry it backwards and forwards and get the position exactly where you need it. Unfortunately, a lot of these cars have rust repairs around the boot and uh, fuel tank area. Very common that all of the, this has all been repaired as well. And of course that can cause misalignment issues. The tolerances weren't that good in the beginning and this is a nice tight fit into the frame. It's usually got to be tapped forward 
so it's nice and snug in the rail area. And if it's had accidents, sometimes the rails can be creased in these areas and might need some massaging there as well. And this car's had a, a really big side swipe, so who knows what the impact is on some of these rail areas. Now there's a really good reason why it has to be as tight as you can get it because this is subject to side load. No fore and aft load, only side load. So you want it to be transferred into the rails as a structural member. This actually ties the car together a lot better. Uh, tying the two frame rails together so it actually stiffens the vehicle as well. Now that this is all positioned, we've checked it by dummying the tank in. Now we're ready to fit the axle housing assembly. So here's one we prepared earlier, and to get to this point, you can click on one of our other three link installation videos, and it'll help you through all of this install. Before we lift the rear assembly in, I just want to point something out. This is the surface area that the trailing arm bushes contact. Now you'll see just here, some lumps of weld. We've dressed that off. If you leave that on there, it can chunder up the urethane bushing. So it's really important the surface is flat and clean because it's a friction surface. And now we're going to leave it up. set up, hang in the torque arm so that we can get the whole thing in position and you'll see how we can align it after we get that part done. So now we're going to lift the whole thing into position. So what we've done now is just hang the axle housing by the shock absorbers. We haven't put the shims in or anything else yet. Uh, now we're about to attach the trailing arms. So we can send it back up. Slip the trailing arms up into position. We're using the factory bolts. We've made sure they're all in good sound order. There you go, man. Take them up more once. Okay. So now our axle housing is pretty well in the right position fore and aft. So you can see the clearance here. Next thing is to fit the Mumford linkage so we get the lateral position of this correct. So now we're installing the Mumford linkage. There's a number of different configurations that you can set this up in, depending on your choice. This is the way I prefer to set it up. Yeah. 
what I'm doing here is checking the position of the axle housing in relation to the chassis rails. So the axle housing has to go over that way. There's a number of different methods of moving the axle housing over. You can pry it over. You can jack it up on one side with uh, a shock absorber disconnected. Or alternatively, you can bolt this up into position and then pull it to where you want it. We'll show you. it move yep. 146 so by making this rod longer this rod shorter and then bolting up these two brackets to the axle housing has moved the axle housing over so now it's even we can't finally check this until we've got it down on the ground, we've set the ride height and we've made sure all the clearances are correct. And what we're looking for is once it is at ride height, these arms start to become parallel. It's not super critical, but it, it does look nicer. So now we've got the basic install done. Now it's time to make sure our articulation angle in the setup of the lower shock absorber mount is correct. So we're just about to lift this up, get the bolt back out, and just check where that should be. So we want the articulation angles, top and bottom, to be pretty close to the same. So that'll mean on this particular one, thinner spacer to the rear. Space it to the front. On this particular one, we've got the thick spacer to the front, thin spacer to the rear, and you can see now our shock absorber articulates freely. So now the tank's in position, we've got ad adequate clearance everywhere, allowing for the movement of the linkages. And you can see why you cannot fit a Watts linkage into this type of chassis. This is the most compact linkage you can get and it vastly improves the handling of the car, the same as a Watts linkage. So that's now our basic install done. The next part of this job is to set up the driveline angle, check the tail shaft to the motor centre line, possibly adjust the ride height and possibly adjust the centering in the vehicle to get even guard clearance for the big tyres that are going on this. So, ride height, drive train angle, centering the bit. Right, so all it does, if you just imagine that this is your watts linkage and here's your 
other side watts link arm. Yeah. Now we've just extended that articulation. If you do the geometry check on this, it has all the same effect as a watts linkage with a pivot point in the middle of the vehicle.